ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. And this is the Gildan Charleston Classic. They've been writing so much stuff about us that has nothing to do with basketball. Yeah. It's time to represent Auburn basketball. Yeah. It's time to show everybody what we've been working on all season long. Yeah. It's time to show them right here, right yeah. now, this yeah. weekend. We want to get this game. Yeah. We got to make this team impossible them to score. Yeah. We got to make this team beat us from two to three. We got to be the more physical team. We got to want it more than they do. Yeah. Bring it here. Just a mile up the road from the Charleston Harbor. The Gildan Charleston Classic begins with Bruce Pearl's Auburn Tigers and the Indiana State Sycamores. With Mark Plansky, Kevin Fitzgerald, here we go. We've got eight teams in this Gildan Charleston Classic. This is game one. Feast week begins right now. Mark, this is a great chance for teams to get that tournament style early in a season. Yeah, Kev, it's a little March Madness in November. Coaches and players love coming to these awesome sites like Charleston, South Carolina. You've got mid-majors playing power five teams, and at the end, you figure out exactly a little more what you have on your team. And you get to eat some turkey at the end of Feast week that's the best part the players laid off the turkey and the cranberry sauce i don't know if mark plansky did no way wave it in here. kevin you know me wave it in <laughs> here we go from td arena in charleston thank you for joining us we've got four today from charleston south carolina and it begins with indiana state and auburn we have a whistle to start our officials joe DeRosa, jerry pollard and jeb hartness is the crew and it looked like it was DeRosa. Stop play momentarily. And a shot clock may have begun at 20 seconds as opposed to 30. Well, it's early. You know, the reps are on top of everything right now, Kevin. You're going to see man-to-man -man defense from both of these squads. And look for inside out, Kevin, for Indiana State. You know, we have a turnover quick, but inside out basketball for the Sycamores and Auburn's up and down. Transition is the key for them this afternoon. Tigers, one of the fastest teams getting up and down the floor a year ago. And this possession begins with four outside of the paint for Auburn. For the starting lineup for the Tigers, 6-5 or shorter. And there's the one forward. Horace Spencer cleans up the glass. Well, Bryce Brown coming off a career performance in game one for Arben. He's got the ultimate green light. And when you launch deep threes, Kevin, rebounds can go anywhere. So get to the rim. Back inside, it's Brandon Murphy for Indiana State. Yeah, you know what his nickname is? Murphquake, for good reason. Just Auburn made a mistake down low. Interior defense going for the steal. You've got to body up. Make him make an offensive move. Don't give him the easy drop step dunk. Back inside, and it's Mustafa Herod fouled at the rim. This is Greg Lansing's eighth season as head coach at Indiana State. Took over in 2010, fourth winning as head coach in program history. Well, nice win a couple days ago for a him. great win. Unbelievable win. When you beat IU at Assembly Hall as a Sycamore head coach, it doesn't get any better. And, of course, he spent some time with Steve Alford as an assistant at Iowa. So you got a lot of Hoosier background. And that's why you're going to see a lot of the Bobby Knight tendencies from the team in white this afternoon. Well, he knows the Knight family, Pat Knight, as well. Heron converts one at the line. He's the premier player out there for Auburn. Returns as a sophomore, led the team in scoring last season. Well, absolutely. As we know, all four of the sophomores for Auburn as freshmen were 1, 2, 3, 4 in scoring. But Mustafa has almost an NBA game. He's close. Body inside. That's Devin Thomas. A strong move. Here comes Auburn. Good job by Murray just bodying up, going vertical on that shot. Good defense. Let's see where Jared Harper is holding the ball. You brought up the shooting prowess. We may see some Tigers pull it from that deep. Off the mark and Thomas the board. There's a whistle. Foul were coming back the other way. Bruce Pearl's team, they like to shoot the three. You mentioned the tempo. We're going to see them run just like they did a season ago. Well, Coach Pearl never has a problem putting points up on the board his number one emphasis this afternoon and all tournament will be defensive transition we're going to launch it we're going to score but we've got to get back we've got to stop the ball more importantly when we go down the other end 
Skip pass to Kedar Davis. And a rebound down to Deshaun Murray. There's the transition. Heron, no. Davis going coast to coast, and he's at the line for two. So it's a track meet the first couple moments. Well, right on cue, Kevin. Defensive transition. You know, Mustafa did a great job coming in with the offensive layup. The miss, however, means you've got to get back and stop the ball. No one stopped the ball to the paint. That's why we're at the line. Davis finished up at Louisiana Tech last year. Spending his graduate season with Indiana State. Both teams are 1-0. Mark mentioned it, the Sycamores took down Indiana on the road. They didn't just beat them, they wiped the floor with Indiana. 90-69 to was the final. It wasn't even a game, and I think what was most impressive was that the Sycamore team, after the game, absolutely acted as if they'd been there before. They shook hands, they acknowledged the fans in the crowd, and then they got back in the locker room and did a little chest bumping and exciting. That's something new for this fan base. It seems like every year Indiana State is taking down either a power conference or a ranked team. Nice backdoor cut that time. Bryce Brown got free. Well, that was a great backdoor cut. The Sycamores are trying to deny that pass, trying to take away the entry pass. And Coach Pearl in that pregame exciting speech said, hey, if they're going to do that, go backdoor. One for one. Into the paint, there's Jordan Barnes. Sophomore point guard. Plenty of experience last year. His game has taken a step forward. And another nice run out, Jared Harper. Well, defensive transition is the key for both teams. Indiana State, horrible job stopping the basketball. Kevin, you've got to stop it at half court, not anywhere near the paint. Brenton Scott. Here comes Heron. Harper running with him. Heron goes in at the line, 4-2. Second foul on Jordan Barnes. Part of that's his first. So 11-20 last year for Indiana State. That was the fewest number of wins in a season since 2009. This is a very good Missouri Valley Conference team. Well, yes, but talking to Coach Greg Lansing yesterday at practice, Kevin, you know, they lost, unbelievable, six overtime games, and they were 5-13 and 13 last season in one possession games with five minutes or less left in the game. All that is is learning how to win. So last year, they lost a lot of games. He's hoping with the new additions to his team and the maturity, now they learn how to win, and they can take advantage of finishing games. They were just not good at finishing last year. Well, look at this unit on the floor. Senior, redshirt senior, senior, junior, very experienced. Selected to finish eighth out of ten of the conference preseason, but that's probably too low for this team. Well, let's not get carried away about the shooting performance they put on against Indiana, Kevin. This team wants to keep the game in the 60s. Greg Lansing is all about defense. He wants to slow the pace down. That's why they're always in games. Now, if they can launch them and shoot with the efficiency that they did against Indiana University, that's a whole different ball game. Harper down and out. Underneath, Auburn is stuck. Heron, they leave him wide open, and he hits. That's what Heron does best. Stand still three. Catch and shoot. He loves to go to his left, but if you leave him open, he can knock down that open perimeter jump shot. You got to watch all the shooters today for Indiana State. Air ball. This is Heron, the sophomore, the first five-star recruit to commit to Auburn. And some steps in the lane. McLemore turns it over. This is an 8-0 Auburn run regardless. Feast week underway. Stick with us in Charleston. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
8-0 run for Auburn out of the gates. This is the first quarterfinal matchup of the Gildan Charleston Classic. Welcome to Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. And the last couple months have certainly been a tedious last couple months for the Auburn Tigers basketball program. One of the assistant coaches, Chuck Person, he was arrested, later indicted on federal charges of bribery. That happening on November 7th, his tie to the FBI's probe into college basketball. And a couple days later, Austin Wiley, Dangel Purifoy held out of the season opener on November 10th. And there's a reason behind that because of their potential involvement in this FBI probe. Well, Mark Plansky is here. Kevin Fitzgerald with you as well. So thanks for joining us for the first game. Those are two key pieces not to have right out of the gates for Bruce Pearl. Oh, absolutely, Kevin. Austin Wiley is, might be the best NBA prospect out there. As the kids say, he's a beast. 6'11", 260, and a great kid. So he is who all NBA scouts are looking at and want. And Purifoy, 6'8", 230, can stroke the three. I mean, you take those two pieces out of an SEC puzzle, and now you're scrambling to try to do the best you can. But, hey, they're up 11-4 early. So that motivational speech in the locker room has come out with the energy Bruce Pearl was looking for. It's Mark Plansky-esque energy in that locker room pregame. You know, and it's perceived trouble sometimes, if you will, in Auburn. And for the men's basketball program, there was a report last week from ESPN that said head coach Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Athletics Department were not quite cooperating you talked, though, with Coach Pearl about that yesterday. Well, first of all, when you're dealing with the federal government, it's hard to say you're cooperating or not cooperating because you can't say anything. Right. I've known Bruce Pearl for 40 years. I think he's doing everything he has to do, wants to do, and is being asked to do. And I've known Bruce for a long time. He's a great coach, great motivator, master promoter. And hopefully Auburn in the program gets through this. The kids get eligibility back, and we have a good season. Well, and the reason why a couple players like Purifoy and Wiley are being held out of action is because of their potential involvement in that FBI investigation. If you play them and they are ruled ineligible, that only jeopardizes the season further and their eligibility down the road. So, risky to play them. Better to hold them out until there is the response handed down by the NCAA. But all things are good. A nine-point lead over Indiana State early. A backdoor cut. Tyreek Key is bumped right underneath the hoop. And I think the most important part of what you just said, Kevin, is the NCAA and FBI. So the NCAA is not in charge here. The federal government is. So there are a lot of moving pieces. But the most important part is look at these two guys. You know, Purifoy and Wiley were the two leading scorers and best players for Bruce Pearl last year. You take them off, and you've got a team now that has opportunity. He goes 9 and 10 deep. They're very athletic. They're small. But I think when Wiley comes back, that's the piece you really need first and foremost, that stud in the middle. Really, the only other forward off the bench for Auburn is Chuma Okiki, the freshman. Scott from the corner. He hit about every single one of those, it felt like, a few nights ago against Indiana. Misfires this time. And down and out on the other end. That was Brown. Indiana State got away with that one. Nobody stopped the ball, and Brown had an easy look from three that should have gone down. Solid defense at time from Bryce Brown. All right, well, NBA Friday, we've got Oklahoma City and San Antonio at 8 p.m. And then later on that evening, New Orleans and Denver. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown, charged by Mountain Dew. That's tomorrow at 7 Eastern, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Defensively, how do you best contain a team like Auburn running up and down the floor? You have to stop the ball. You can't say it enough. Any coach in America that's watching this game says, folks, stop the ball. And it doesn't have to be the guy who's covering the guard with the ball. Just first man up. Stop the ball at the half-court logo and communicate and scramble and recover. That's how you stop them. One thing that Indiana State is, is an experienced team, a core that has played together for a couple years now. And that possession, they were looking inside to Imandre Rickman. And we're going back the other way after the foul. That is an offensive foul. And it's going to go against Davion Mitchell, the freshman from Hinesville, Georgia. A lot of foul on Davion Mitchell. 
You know, the freshman along with his teammate, Chuma Okiki, are still trying to figure out how do you play on a college level with these referees. You know, Kevin, in high school, when you're a stud athlete and a stud prospect, the referees let you get away with a lot. And, of course, AAU basketball, there may not be any referees throughout the whole game. They get in early foul trouble, and they have not shown the Auburn faithful how talented these two freshmen are. All right, two four-star recruits as well. That's Horace Spencer back into the game. By the way, two fouls on Anthony McLemore. He's another forward off the bench. Not quite maybe a four or a five, but that's six foot seven size Auburn needs inside today. And he is a brilliant young man. I don't even know if you know this. He turned down a full academic scholarship to MIT to come to Auburn for an athletic scholarship. He's the one that usually knows how to manage the fouls. Comes from a fantastic family. It's from Sylvester, Georgia. Another three ball off the mark this time. That was Okiki. He can stretch the floor. That is a foul on Malik Dunbar. That is his first foul. All afternoon, Kevin, whoever defends the high ball screen, the pick and pop, the pick and roll, the replace and the reverse pass, that is who's going to have the hands up on winning this game. That last possession for Auburn could not have been done better with the exception of not knocking down the open three. Last season, Auburn attempted just about 25 threes per game. There's only one other team in the SEC that made more per game. This is a team that has a green light. Neon green. Neon green. Without question. We were talking to Coach Pearl about that yesterday. You know, the game of college basketball now, Kevin, is all about get as many possessions as possible, where he started with Dr. Tom Davis when every possession was so important, your life depend upon it. That's not the case anymore. They're not using the 30 seconds of shot clock every possession today. Still a 10-0 run for Auburn. Sycamore is trying to cut into that. Here comes Harper. And he carried. This is the opener of Feast Week from Charleston, South Carolina. So we've got 11 days, 118 games. By the way, the Puerto Rico tip-off at Myrtle Beach is right up the road. Is also ongoing today. That kicks off with South Carolina and Illinois State about 100 miles up the road. That's and, it. And they've got three teams who played here last year right? in the Charleston Tournament, Western Michigan, UTEP, and Boise State. So, you know, they love those mid-majors going to these tournaments. Now there is Barnes for three. Bruce Pearl said, do not call this team a mid-major. They no. are not mid-major level. They can compete in the Missouri Valley this year. Jordan Barnes was 5 of 7 from behind the arc against IU, and a couple of them in the last waning seconds of the shot clock. He loves to let it go when contest. Oh, Kiki wide open. Oh, credit Jared Harper. What a great give and go. The oldest play in the basketball book executed to perfection. Harper led this team at assists a year ago. Jared yeah, he Harper, is, uh, he's just an unbelievable sophomore guard. Just always your eyes on the rim, Kevin, right? He goes up, he's going to shoot the, the ball, and then he sees Okiki cutting to the wide open basket. Awesome give and go. Harper, another top 100 recruit, so is Okiki. And you start hearing that now when Bruce Pearl shows up on the sidelines as recruited talent. Now, last year, this team won 18 games. First winning season at Auburn since 2009. And Bruce said it. He thought this was potentially going to be that year of getting back to the NCAA tournament. So you had the superb freshman, one, two, three, four leading scorers last year. They went to Italy as a team, and everybody knows when you take your team and you bond in those summer Europe trips, it's awesome. They're coming in for the second season, the sophomore season. Everyone's all excited. And then, of course, the news hits in September, and everyone's hanging on with white knuckles, duct tape, and dental floss. So... You know, it's, it's just survive in advance. That's what Auburn's doing right now. And still waiting on the potential eligibility of Austin Wiley, D'Angelo Purifoy. There's Malik Dunbar with his first bucket. I'll tell you what, too easy. Indiana State has, has to start defending that low post and those cuts. I mean, the, the paint is wide open against Auburn. Foul. 
foul on Auburn. Okiki bumped Key. And an eight-point lead for Auburn. First action today, Gildan Charleston Classic. Auburn up early over Indiana State, an eight-point advantage inside TD Arena. All right, Mark Plansky, let's go inside the play. Yeah, my mic's open. Yep. Go ahead, I'm not talking. So Auburn with the Go early ahead. advantage and 18 wins a season ago for the Tigers. Looking to build on that. It was the first winning season in Auburn for Bruce Pearl and company since 2009. And Bruce was still in Knoxville at that time. Infusing energy among this group with two players inactive. And that is D'Angelo Purifoy, Austin Wiley, but all good so far. Indiana State's two of nine from the field. Defensively, Auburn has made it pretty tough. Well, second chance. You know, it's 5 nothing Auburn early, and that's where this game is going to be won. And Indiana State is just a sieve on defense in the paint because on top of that, Auburn's up 10-5 on rebounds. And if you anyone looks out at the court right now, the size is in the white uniform. So it's just effort and maybe a little nerves from Indiana State. Well, a few rebounds already, three for Deshaun Murray. By the way, Murray is six foot three. That's it. You'll see him on the interior. There's a bump at the top of the key. It's Kedar Davis's second foul. His coaching staff calls it the defensive leader, but he's already picked up a couple. Takes a seat. And back into the game, Brandon Murphy. Murray goes inside. Spencer tried to follow, and Heron is underneath. Half a dozen for the sophomore from Waterbury, Connecticut. Here's Brenton Scott. Indiana State needs production from the guard. 24, his last time out. Well, ongoing today as well. The Puerto Rico tip-off at Myrtle Beach. Currently on ESPN2, you have Illinois State, a Final Four team from a year ago, South Carolina. Oh, Coach Frank Martin is about 140 miles away, so that worked out well despite the hurricane disaster, obviously. But Coach Martin, you talk about crazy energy. He puts Bruce Pearl to shame. Barnes is three. Gets it back to a five-point game. Another three ball on this side. That's Murray. Second time that Harper has made the absolute correct read on that high ball screen. The Indiana State Sycamores are not respecting the pick and pop. That is open right now, so Auburn is going to it. Careless pass. Here comes Harper. Heron lets it fly. And another offensive rebound for Auburn. Just bad fundamental basketball. Put a body on them. Box out, then go get the ball. That's the fourth already for Auburn. Not even halfway through the first half. You just see the energy difference between Indiana State's defense and Auburn's. They're off their players. They're letting Auburn come to them, and that is why they're allowing the drive, allowing the basket attack. And Auburn is fouled by Brandon Murphy. What do they need to do a little bit better defensively? Yeah. Energy. They just need a little bit of Auburn's energy. Just get up in the passing lane. I mean, they got burnt first time, Kevin, on that backdoor play, but that's okay. Let them do it again because you have a second rotation slide if that's going to be a continued theme. But when you let Auburn make penetration passes with no defense, well, then you're going to just play reactive defense the whole game, and you're going to lose. 
know, the idea about defense is make the offender do what you want him to do. Don't react. If you want to make him go left, make Harper go left. Don't react and let him go either way. It's a missed opportunity there for Harper. He's not a bad free throw shooter. That was what was most impressive about the win for Indiana State over Indiana a couple nights ago. They didn't just hit 17 threes. They beat up the Hoosiers defensively, too. Here's Barnes. Yes. And a little look at the Auburn bench. And that is going to warrant a technical foul. Gave a little look, probably too long. Craig Lansing, he is confirming with Jerry Pollard on that far side of the court, asking exactly what happened. And Bruce Pearl's team with the technical free throws, and it is Bryce Brown to shoot. Well, I didn't see it, but Jordan Barnes, JB, now three for four from behind the arc. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a flag in the end zone for overreacting, perhaps. Take a look at it. Beautiful shot, high arc, outside your screen. A little taunting view. I don't know. That's yep. that's a little, <laughs> that's a second of a glare. I'm not sure if that warrants a technical foul, Kevin. Yeah, it was just long enough for Pollard, who made that call over there. Well, and you don't want that to happen in a game. And Auburn has controlled the pace. Some complimentary points from the line. Brown again. Underneath, it looked like Rickman caught a piece of it at the rim. But a did. whistle, though, afterward. Mark. Did a great job. Great block, but then a good offensive crashing of the boards. I mean, you can't give up baseline. That's rule number one. Good block by Rickman, but then crashing Tigers, taking uh, you know advantage of the offensive rebounds. Not crouching Tiger, that's crashing Tigers. You put a plural on that. You caught me. We you mentioned earlier, Murray is just one of those guys, undersized. He's being asked to play the power forward position, but there he is competing in the trees, getting it done, going to the line, knocking them both down. Murray was just too good for the Big South. Was at Presbyterian, scored more than 20 a game a couple seasons ago. Transfer to Auburn. He like his defensive game, too. Oh, he's, he's an animal on defense. Oh, there he is. He's guarding the ball. Key going in. Couple Tigers affect the shot. Rickman follows. That's just size. Rickman's bigger, longer, stronger. Good defense by Auburn. You're going to give up the offensive rebound. There was a body in between, but couldn't compete with the size. When you make a bucket, you slow Auburn down, too. Brenton Scott on Harper. Brown thought about it. Back to Harper. Rebound down to Kessinger. Tyreek Key, the freshman, driving again. Not a great look, although stays on this side. Well, you take the last possession, getting right to the lane. You can see great contest, but Rickman, of course, wide open for the offensive rebound. You can't fault. Bruce Pearl's not going to fault Auburn for that defensive attempt to block the shot, but you have to try to rotate and box out Rickman as well. He's just a big body down there. Auburn's defense has been harassing today. Spencer starts the turnover and the breakout this way. And it's Brown with the bucket. A 10-point lead for Auburn in a timeout, Indiana State. You can talk. Okay, you can talk. 
talk. Go ahead and talk, talk. yeah. Go ahead. I told him this. I, I told him. Auburn with the early lead. 10 point advantage over Indiana State. Feast week is upon us. This is our first game in the quarterfinals of the Gildan Charleston Classic. Brenton Scott and the Sycamores off to a 1 0 start after a victory over Indiana. Where's his box? Where's his box? I told him. Auburn has run a bit into the paint. Murray, and he's heading to the line. Murray has already connected one time at the line. So you know, Auburn, 18 and 14 a year ago. First winning season at Auburn since 2000. And eight. And Murray is an excellent addition this season. Sat out a year ago. He transferred from Presbyterian two years ago. Scored more than 20 points a night. And Bruce Pearl likes his defense, though. This is Auburn's largest lead, up 12. Remember, right after us, at 130, Temple and Old Dominion in the second quarter final matchup. This is what Auburn does. Excellent passing to Spencer. Technical foul. That is the second today. One was already assessed on Indiana State, and it looked like another has been assessed to Deshaun Murray. There he is, number 13 in the orange. And Murray's getting an explanation from Joe DeRosa. Now, earlier it was Jordan Barnes who's whistled for a taunting technical foul. The same happens for Auburn and Murray. Demonte Ojinakano. Auburn has held a comfortable lead since opening tip. Back on offense and another three. Tend to shoot. Barnes twisting. Kissinger missed the follow. Barnes gets it again. Back to a 13-point advantage. Whistle inside. Offensive foul, though. Little helter-skelter. Referees slowing everything down. Referees <laughs> taking the opportunity to get the coaches to let every substitutions. Whoo! Kev, I'm back. Well, I'm glad you are. We're here for the next few days. This is the quarterfinal opening matchup of the Gildan Charleston Classic. Feast week is upon us. Oh, we uh, had some audio difficulties, and Kevin Fitzgerald took the opportunity to, as a Syracuse grad to just box out the Villanova Wildcat and do a, a mono solo job. Well done, this, partner. This, Way to handle it. This was my one chance to get rid of you here. It worked for just a bit, but there's a lot of fight in you. Just like Harper, and it drops. 
But once again, straight line drive, no rotation, no help. Get the ball out of the ball handler's hand. Auburn doing what they want with the ball. Indiana State has to stop, rotate, and recover. Thomas going the other way. They say Thomas hooked around Harper. Auburn ball. Well, you, a little frustration on this side. You just boys. said it, partner. That's the word I was thinking. A lot of frustration. You know, Auburn has come at them. They're attacking them. It's a great call. You can see it right here. He's going to wrap it around. No need once you use that offhand. A little chicken wing down here. You get some great chicken in Charleston, South Carolina. But the guys in white are all discombobulated. They've got to get themselves together and try to equal the energy that Auburn has come out with this afternoon. And the Sycamore is shooting 32% from the field. That's it. Auburn, on the other hand, shooting 33% from beyond the line. Okiki hangs in the air, almost banked it in. Thomas the board. Well, it's really the only offense. Three triples, that's it. Bad pass. Okiki. He's got a chance to be a pro, Kevin. He really does. You saw him the possession before. He got stuck in the air. He went, left his feet as we have another turnover by Indiana State. But he left his feet and had to bail out the shot. But then here he is in the passing lane. Great anticipation. And in that body, that's an NBA body. And then above the rim with the finish. The 15th point off of a turnover for Auburn today in the first half. And you saw the disparity, 15 to 3. McLemore with good position. Okiki, the safe pass back out. If you're going to play man-to-man -man defense, you've got to get up and defend. Right here. Look, look how far off he is. You're going to get stuck on that high ball screen. Heron through the right arm. Offensive foul. Good call. Good call. Didn't need it. He had already beaten his man. Just take a tighter angle to the front of the rim instead of bowing out. But it all starts with the ability to get to the paint. That was a good call. Great job moving your feet by Tyree Key. Heron at times had to carry the offense a year ago. He scored 15 a game. Today, though, it has been a balanced scoring attack. Eight players are already in the scores chart for Auburn. And players like Okiki and McLemore playing with two fouls are playing well. Well, you mentioned it. Mustafa's thinking with everything that's going on off the court, when you lose the ability of Austin Wiley and D'Angelo Purifoy, okay, I'm going to take over. And that's maybe what happened in the preseason, the exhibition. But now I've got a lot of guys that can score. We have a lot of guys in this team, eight, nine guys that can get up and score double digits. So let the offense come to me. And you watch. Heron will then light it up and be the go-to guy. You saw the Jerry West watch list. It's an award annually giving out, given out, I should say, to the best shooting guard in the country. Now, Heron can bring the ball up, too. Bruce Pearl wants him slashing, and as he told us, taking a few more shots this year, he's become a better shooter. How about Brown? He had a nice shooting night a couple days ago. Well, I mean, he had a career night. So, hey, Kevin, how about get up on him? I mean, the guy scored 31 the last game out. A simple jab step, and Key steps off and gives an uncontested three. You want more intensity on the Indiana State defensive side? I want some intensity, not more. How about some? Here's Key. That one might have been chipped in the air. That was McLemore, and the run out again. Here they go. Brown locks and loads, and it's down and out. Okiki saves it. And he's headed to the line. It's McLemore. McLemore not giving up whatsoever. It was great. Bryce Brown failing it. A little heat check coming down on a transition with the three. And then McLemore sticking with it and getting that offensive rebound in between the Sycamore trees. It's all Auburn this afternoon so far, Kev. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. And Old Spice. What a fun Friday night in Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana State opens up against Archie Miller and the Hoosiers in his debut as head coach in Hoosier land. And 
The Sycamores shot out of a cannon. Mark, they hit 17 triples on Friday night, and they stamped Indiana. Unbelievable performance, excitement everywhere. You know, Kevin, they were 17 for 22 with five minutes left to go in the game when they emptied the bench, ended missing the last four. That's 77% for the main part of the game. That is ridiculous. That was like your shooting percentage back during your Villanova days. But look what Indiana State has done non-conference the last few years. They are always good for one of these upsets. Those are three ranked teams. They beat Miami in 2012, the year they won the ACC tournament as well. And how about for head coach Greg Lansing? Experience that victory with his father, not just in attendance, but on the sideline on Indiana State's bench as well. His father, Dave Lansing, a... Iowa High School Basketball Hall of Famer. Yeah, two-time Hall of Famer for a coach and a referee. Right. I mean, does it get any better when the son can win at Assembly Hall for his dad? But, you know, you and I know better. He just couldn't get a seat. The only place to put him was on the bench. <laughs> they usually fill that place up, don't they? That's the first one-on-one -on -one move from Auburn's offense almost in the whole half. Everything's come in transition or attacking the rim. Brenton Scott can't buy a bucket early on, and he is a premier shooter. But in this game, just two points. Do you like the way Auburn's moved the ball this half? The, continuing right here, just attacking, attacking, attacking. They are 24-6 to six in the paint, and they're not doing it with post moves. They're attacking it off the dribble and their offensive rebounding collectively as a team as aggressively as I've ever seen a team who is undersized coming into a, a matchup like this. Well, and that explains a 22-point deficit in the first half. Indiana State looked good in practice yesterday. But Auburn has beat this team so far with the speed. Well, it's going to be a loud halftime conversation with Coach Greg Lansing and his team. He is one to play defense first, get up in everyone's grill, and make them make the extra pass, the bad pass, get in the passing lane. It's Auburn who's made the extra pass off the dribble. Indiana State against IU, as we saw, made that extra pass, had mostly uncontested threes. This afternoon, they've made one pass, Kevin, and one pass shots are not the way to score and not the way to shoot with high efficiency. And Indiana State just 29% shooting from the field. Auburn, on the other hand, above 50%. Sycamore is trying to cut into a 10-0 Auburn run. That's the second 10-0 run for Auburn in this half. Into traffic, and Davis rewarded with a couple free throws. Well, and Indiana State, Mark, may be without Brandon Murphy, at least for the foreseeable future. He's off the floor. Take a look at 34 and White. Oh, just an elbow. You know, a little collateral damage, no intention whatsoever. But, you know, now you've got to ask yourself about possible concussion, the protocol, you know, perhaps a facial fracture. That's just unfortunate because he's the guy down low that is the big body that Indiana State needs. And he's the senior from Montgomery, Alabama. And so underneath, we've seen a bit more of Amandre um, Rickman, also Bronson Kessinger. And this is Davis at the free throw line. Sat out last year, transferred from Presbyterian. That's his school right here in South Carolina. You know, Kevin, Indiana State is not built to come back for the 20, from a 20-point deficit. They want to control the pace. They want the game to be in the 60s. Look at that score. We're going to have a 90-point game here. It's Auburn's pace. It's Auburn's tempo, and that's why they're up 21. Yeah, Auburn led the SEC in scoring a year ago. This is their specialty, to run and play games of the 80s and 90s. You know, there's What's plenty of basketball left, Kevin. I mean, one at a time, Coach Greg Lansing knows that the way you come back from a 20-point deficit is one possession at a time, but it has to start on the offensive end with moving the basketball. Strong that time off of Davis's fingertips. Four on one. Oh, excellent sleight of hand, and Clayton Hughes. He's going all the way. Davis follows up. <laughs> Clayton <laughs> Hughes. Great anticipation down on the defensive end. He stopped a three-on-one all by himself. Hey, Kev, why not? I mean, why would I want to dish it off? Let's go with the full highlight. I want to be on Sports Center. Well, and an excellent block, too, defensively by Auburn. 
And into traffic that time, Harper tried to float it off the window. Barnes pulls. No. Back to the Tigers. Clayton Hughes, Mark. The turnover, he starts his own break, was going in, and Horace Spencer denies him. You know, and an excellent job by Horace Spencer. Good look right there. Verticality going up straight with your hands up, getting over the rim, and Hughes just not to be denied. I love that effort. He's the freshman from Jackson, Tennessee. Excellent high school career at the university school in Tennessee. See, Kevin, you can't let Auburn walk the ball up when they're up by 20. I mean, you just can't do it. Up top, and it's McLemore. Excellent pass, excellent finish. You know how you stop the alley -oop? Pressure on the ball. Zero pressure on the ball. It's like giving Tom Brady five seconds. He'll find the wide open receiver. That's what just happened on the point guard. No go. That time it was Ojanaka. The start of Feast Week, and Auburn has come out of the gates flying. Up 21, shooting well from the field. Nine different scores. I think Bruce Pearl is going to want to sign a contract with ESPN. Every pregame has to be on air because they are hitting on all cylinders coming out of that locker room. At the buzzer, no. Brown's last try off the mark. And Auburn ends the half on a 12-4 run. All right, we've got Utah Valley all access from the weekend. Opening up against Kentucky and Duke. Highlights and stats and much more. Auburn up big at the break. Just about ready to start the second half. Quarterfinal action, the Gildan Charleston Classic. This is the start of Feast Week presented by Lowe's and with Mark Plansky. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. Thank you for making us a part of your early morning and into the afternoon as well. Auburn running, just like a Bruce Pearl team that we saw a year ago in the move. They are working it in transit. PN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. And this is the Gildan Charleston Classic. Back to TD Arena for the second half of Auburn, Indiana State. Well, when you visit Charleston, you have to get the carriage ride around downtown Charleston, maybe to the market as well. I know Mark Plansky may be visiting there at some point. A couple of times. <laughs> I love this format of this tournament. You get Saturday off. I'm going to be on a horse. I'm going to be down the cobblestones. Maybe giving the tour at some point. Well, here's the bracket for the Gildan Charleston Classic. Quarterfinals today. We've got action all throughout the day. Ongoing right now, too, is the Puerto Rico tip-off at Myrtle Beach. So we've got basketball all day for the next 11 days. And Auburn out to an early lead. This is a great opportunity for teams early in the season to play three games in four days. You learn not about the players as well, but the coaching staff learns a bit about their rotations. All South Carolina all the time. Charleston, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, right down the coast. 16 teams, but to your point, and it's a great opportunity for the mid-majors to get exposure on national TV and on all the ESPN networks, and if they work hard, pull off a great victory, which will show well, because most of, in, at the end of the year, to the committee, because most of these mid-majors play in conferences like the Conference USA. It's really a one-bid conference. So this is a more valuable learning experience because you really need to win your conference to get to the big dance. Big minutes for Indiana State right out of the gate here in the second half. Always the first four minutes. The last four minutes of the first half and the first four of the second half. We know Auburn dominated the last four minutes, so Indiana State has to come out and set a new tone. The roll to the basket. Imandre Rickman starting in place of Brandon Murphy in the second half. An immediate impact. How about that pass? I mean, that was sensational. JB, Jordan Barnes off the dribble. Just an excellent dime. There's another cut towards the rim, and Brown got buried underneath. He starts 
grabbing at the back of his neck. That was hard contact underneath. But Brown is at the line. And the foul is on Brenton Scott. That is his first. A carbon copy of the first possession on the first half where Indiana State came out, denied that entry pass, and Auburn doing an excellent job. Fundamental basketball, go back door. And how about Murray with that one-hand bounce pass? He is a do-it-all type of guy. He's the junior from Stanley, North Carolina. Brown went for 31 in the opener against Norfolk State. Well, Auburn scored 102 points. That is now Auburn offense. Well, we've gotten a great look at the Auburn offense. And again, as we've said in the first half, Kevin, it's all about the transition defense that's going to get W's for the guys in orange. And so far, the first 20 minutes plus, they have not disappointed anyone on Bruce Pearl's staff. Sycamores need Scott to get going. Still hasn't hit a field goal. And hasn't made a shot yet, forcing it right there. The reason he had 24 points against Indiana University, he let it come to him. Just no ball pressure again right out of the gate. You can't let Harper take two or three dribbles and just rise up and shoot a three. Get the ball out of his hands. Get up on him. Now eight points for Harper. Bard shot blocked. Spencer Horace. Oh. And it goes right to Bryce Brown. <laughs> You talk about quick hands. I mean, that was all ready for us to say bad pass. You never make a cross-court bounce pass like that. And he just said, give me that. That was like a defensive quarterback saying, I'll take that. Rickman too strong. Get Murray. Only six foot three. He's not going to shoot. He's going to play inside. But fundamentally has the guy in his back porch. Great box out. Offensive foul. And this may be a whistle on Spencer inside. We take a look at a good block shot by Spencer, and then here comes the transition. Murray, the do-it-all guy, just made a bad pass, but then Brown just says, give me that. I mean, Brenton Scott had it in his hand. Brown with a quick reach around. It's been the story for Indiana State. little lucky bounce that way. Remember last year, Indiana State kept losing all those close games. He never got the benefit of the doubt. Falling behind by 25, and Auburn... Looks very strong and without Dangel Purifoy and Austin Wiley. Little too much steps. Tigers take it. Three possessions in a row, Kevin. One on one basketball. As you take a look at Brandon Murphy coming back out of the locker room, still looks a little dazed. His right eye's bruised up. Got a couple of butterfly strips with a cut on that right eye. Took an elbow to the face in the first half. So Rickman is going to get some minutes. Now, this looks Auburn-esque. Key all the way in, the freshman from Salina, Tennessee. Great recognition of an opportunity on that transition as you take a look at Murphy. Looks like he just came out of five rounds in heavyweight battle. But right to the rim. Indiana State needs to now get up and get some stops. Three ball. Heron misfires. Good chance to go two for one. Barnes into uh, McLemore out of bounds. You know, and everybody from Indiana State's asking for a foul, but that's an excellent job by McLemore going straight up, vertical with your arms up. Never bring your arms down, Kevin. That's an easy foul. The chest on chest is not being called anymore outside of that restricted area in the paint. Yeah, no offense initiated con uh, contact is going to be whistled as a defensive foul. Rickman, another chance at the line. Just a big body, long. Rickman has those arms that just go on forever, and he's still learning on the skill part of the game. But excellent job of keeping the ball high and playing a little ping pong offensive rebounding game. I love Moses Malone there. He got to, you know, stuff the stat sheet there. He's got seven offensive rebounds in one possession. It's a long wingspan. You get the wingspan, you can do that. Rickman, the junior from Collinsville, Illinois. Indiana State went into the half down by more than 20, and that deficit is 23. All right, fresh off of that stomping of Notre Dame last week, now number three ranked Miami returns home to Hard Rock Stadium to take on Virginia. New sights 
are clearly set on a position in the college football playoff. Remember, Miami has already clinched a spot in the ACC title game. We'll play Clemson. And this orange turns it over. First example all afternoon of Indiana State denying that entry pass. Great job by Davis, resulted in the turnover. Back to Rickman. He's got the much smaller McLemore on him, but he still blocks the shot. A whistle. That's the fourth on Anthony McLemore. Well, we mentioned Rickman still a little raw down low with his offensive skills in the post. McLemore doing an excellent job rising up. You know, looks like he caught him on the wrist. Good call. You know, because when you play in the playgrounds, Kevin, hands part of the ball. So that's no way that's not a foul. I mean, I never committed a foul. I got called for a lot, but I never got, never committed any. That was always your story, huh? I'm sticking to it. No, no fouls called in practice. Remember, this is first, second, third game of the year for a lot of these teams. You know, we have Temple coming up next, taking on Old Dominion. Temple hasn't played a game yet. This is their first of the season. At approximately 2 p.m. Eastern. So with these free throws, sends Anthony McLemore to the bench for Auburn. That's his fourth foul. Indiana State has it back to a 20-point game. So a couple of things. Indiana State clearly coming into the second half with get the ball down low. Let's go inside out, and clearly let's get up in the pressure, the passing lanes, and that is how you chip away at a 20-point lead. Chuma Okiki replaces McLemore on the floor. Harper, he's the sophomore from Ableton, Georgia. He's run the offense effectively today. All the way up to Heron. He caught that on the boundary of this side, it, it looked like. I think Harper was going to do the pick and roll, was going to drop it into the middle of the lane, and he saw Mustafa flying in on the baseline. That was very close to being sensational. Long two. Stays here. Key got a piece. You take a look at it, the roll right there to Okiki, and then from the way outside on the baseline, Mustafa flying in. That pass was about six inches away from being an and one. Caught that one on his hip almost. With one second to shoot, Okiki had to flare it up. Harper sticks with Barnes. Thomas. Sets the screen for Barnes. Three triples in the first half. Off the mark this time. It's good possession. Inside out. Nice little ball screen. Had a good look. Just did not convert the three. Now Auburn's going to slow it down a bit. I really like Jared Harper. I mean, for a young sophomore, he has controlled this game throughout this afternoon. Step back for Brown. Okiki. Can't get the roll. The tip. Good follow that time, and it was Murray. Key in transition. They trade buckets. And you know what, Kevin? You can't trade buckets now. You're, you're down 20. You've got to get a stop. And Murray just continues to crash the offensive glass. Underman, undersized in the end of the state, but you got to put a body on your man. And he leads everyone today. Nine rebounds. Rebounding's all about effort. Best rebounder ever. I don't care what you say. Dennis Rodman. Size and strength, six foot eight, the best rebounder. Why? Every shot that went up, he thought was going to miss, and he went after, and he got it. Key catches it half court. Up and in. Little energy from the Indiana State bench. Transition defense. Auburn contained the Sycamores in the first half. Now they've had two breakaways in the second half, and that's led to the 9 2 run. But we need to get up pressure and get some stops on the defensive end. You want a little more physical defense? And they foul that time on Barnes. Oh, he's at the line. 18 point game. Indiana State looking to come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
Indiana State Sycamore's basketball program from Terre Haute, Indiana. Taking it all the sites around Charleston, South Carolina this week. Visiting the Emmanuel Aim Church where the devastating shooting occurred a couple years ago. Also visited the USS Yorktown where the opening reception dinner was held for all eight teams. So much to do, so many sights to see around Charleston, South Carolina. Great food, too. You know when you come down to South Carolina, you're going to have excellent food options, especially in Charleston. And for not just Indiana State and head coach Craig Lansing, but all of these teams in the eight-team tournament at the Charleston Classic. We've got Old Dominion and Temple coming up, an opportunity for these teams and these players to experience a new city like Charleston. Well, absolutely. We are talking to Greg Lansing yesterday. As much as he is focused, and very much so, on winning these ball games, he stopped and talked to the college of Charleston's coaching staff and said, hey, what else should we do? Like, this has to be an all-in experience for my kids. And uh, you got to love that. I mean, Greg gets it. And, you know, the win is more important than the loss, obviously. But the total package is what he's looking to succeed with when he leaves Sunday night. Maybe a visit to Cole's Chop House in the cards as well. He was talking about that. A nice steak. Well, that's on your Charleston. budget, Kevin. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to buy dinner there tomorrow night. You got dinner last night, so I, I, I owe you as well, huh? That's my strategy. I'm just waiting for our visit to Cole's Chop House. Did you enjoy your cup of soup? <laughs> well, Auburn with the free throw has it. Back to a 19-point advantage. You know, an excellent job by Bruce Pearl. Part of the reason for the Sycamore is making a run here in the second half is lack of energy. So what does he do? Comes out with a full-court press. Catches in the end of state by a surprise and gets the ball back with the turnover. Now you mentioned before we went to break, you'd like to, I would like to see Indiana State play a little more aggressive defense. The reason why you know, we had a foul right there by Kedar Davis is he wasn't up on the ball. You know, Kevin, when you play man-to-man -man defense, if you get up on the ball, maybe the guy can beat you. I mean, look, I covered Michael Jordan. He's going to beat everybody, right? But it's not me. You're forcing him to the next rotation. Now, the guy with the ball doesn't know that. Indiana State's trying to play one-on-one -on -one defense only, no help defense, and you're not going to win that way, and that's why Auburn has their 19-point lead. Especially ineffective against someone like Jordan, and yes. Well, there's a reason why I'm behind the microphone, Kevin. Okay, it's because <laughs> I played against Michael Jordan. The quickest way to the unemployment line, right there. Cover number 23. And that was your first mistake. And don't be blaming Coach Massimino here now. No blaming Coach Mass. <laughs> one of the best ever to roam the sidelines. By the way, Michael was not the best player I ever played against in my career. Just, I'm just going to go on record. This is Barnes from the corner. And he connects. Another three-pointer. That's his fourth. That's really been the lone instant offense for Indiana State today. And that was a design play coming out of the timeout by Coach Lansing. An excellent job of running Barnes along two screens on the baseline, reversing the ball. Arvin not expecting him to catch and shoot. And he converted down with the three. There you go. Get up on him. Nice job, Bronson. Harper stops. Feeds Murray. Puts his teammate in a good spot. And they convert. Well, it's hard to keep him off the court, isn't it, Murray? I mean, he just does so many things. Understands the game. High IQ. Very few mistakes while he's playing. Blocked again. Kissinger had his shot affected. And this time it's Okiki. Well, Kiki has that big NBA body. Talking to the Hall of Famer, Sonny Smith, former coach of Auburn. He's the one that said, watch this freshman, Mark. He's a little raw, but he has got that NBA potential. You know, Kiki is going back to the line. Four-star. He was ranked 50th on ESPN's top 100 list for the class of 2017. Fantastic career at Westlake High School in Georgia. And that foul is on Kessinger. These two went at it on both sides of the court. A 20-point lead for Auburn. All right, if it's not Michael Jordan, by the way, who is the best player that you faced? <laughs> well, that's easy for me. Lenny Bice, number 34 for the Maryland Turpins. Not even close. Michael is the best ever. Lenny would have been better, in my opinion. 
Kiki trying to find a teammate. Harper in the air, and Rickman secures that one among his dreadlocks. Barnes shot blocked by Murray, all-around player. Just deceptive. I mean, 6-4-3, excellent job of not drawing the foul, and then with the wingspan and the timing to get the block shot. I mean, excellent job by Indiana State, pushing, have the numbers, and then just a little reach out with the block shot and getting his teammates back together. Let's go. Get back. Let's hit defense. Here comes Okiki. Steps into the paint. Little strong. Barnes uses the elbow into his defender. Harper gets the call. Auburn ball. You like Harper. Oh, I love it. He's, he's Bruce Pearl's best defender, and you talk about best defender. Watch him move his feet right there. Excellent job. Excellent job keeping your body in front of him, and then he didn't have to use the arm. That was going to be a charge. Great footwork. That's four fouls on Jordan Barnes. He has 16 points. He's heading to the bench. Nobody else for Indiana State has more than eight. He's out of this game, and now what do you do? Well, he was trying to do a little too much in that last possession, and you can never knock that. I'd much rather have to tame the Tiger than ask someone to step it up and play with more offensive aggressiveness. Oh, Kiki from downtown. Wow, you start laying in a three-point shot for that big man. Bruce Pearl's got himself another sensational freshman. And he has three scores in double figures. Okiki, Brown, and Murray. A whistle underneath. This has been all Auburn. 23-point advantage. It is gorgeous in Charleston, South Carolina. Temperatures in the mid-60s, sunny skies today. Eight teams visiting for the Gildan Charleston Classic. Uh, we're going to span the all of North America here for Feast Week. The Maui Jim Maui Invitational, the Puerto Rico tip-off moved to Myrtle Beach, but a fantastic tournament field, Mark, at the PK-80, the Phil Knight Invitational that Nike has put on. 16 teams, premier teams around the country, and... So much great basketball over the next 11 days. And ongoing right now, as I mentioned, the Puerto Rico tip-off at Myrtle Beach, right up the road in Conway, South Carolina, 100 miles from us. You'll have games today, tomorrow, and then Sunday. So preseason, the tournament hoops, excuse me, I should say, in South Carolina. Get to play some golf. Gonna go outside, get some sun. Does it get any better than this? No, no, it does not, folks. Come on down to South Carolina. Hey. Plenty of options, plenty of Lynx options in South Carolina. This is going to stay here. Auburn. It's been in command since well, midway through the first half. You could say there's a foul at the rim. And he's going to go against Chuma Okiki, who has been a star in the second half. And he's holding the mouth. And this is fourth foul, by the way. Well, Devin Thomas has those long, sharp elbows attached to those arms, and I think Okiki might have caught one on that uh, double pump layup attempt. Deshaun Murray checks back in for Okiki. He's number four in the orange at the right elbow. Yep. Always go up with the right elbow lead. As long as you don't push off, Kevin, you will always draw the foul instead of being called for the foul. Devin Thomas today, his first points. He's the junior from Richmond, Indiana. You know, we're inside the 12-minute mark. I'm coming up to 10 minutes to go in the second half. Indiana State's 
has to start doubling. They have to start putting some pressure on the defensive end, maybe extend the pressure to full court. You're not going to be able to go and trade baskets. You need stops and turnovers. You want some chances? Absolutely. You're down 20. You have to. Murray for three. Make it 24. Just an excellent job at driving the lane, getting into the gap, drawing two Indiana State defenders, and then the cross-court weak pass for the three. And Deshaun Murray, his game is versatile. He's defending Thomas. There was pressure right behind. Well, he Dunbar fouled. It's a second on Ojinaka. You know, we started with the conversation of defensive transition the very first minute in this game, Kevin. Stop the ball. How many times have the guys in the orange uniforms gotten to the paint in transition? That is a cardinal sin. I don't care who you are. Stop the ball at half court. Make that ball handle and get it out of his hands. All right, so on Saturday night at 8 p.m. and then 5 Pacific on ABC, number 11, USC hosts UCLA at the Coliseum. Josh Rosen and Sam Darnold, the victory bell on the line. Trojans won the last two meetings. Trojans, they've won three in a row since that loss to Notre Dame. That's streaming live on the ESPN app. Auburn full court pressure, and that's a whistle. It's on Dunbar. Bruce Pearl turning it up a notch with the defensive pressure. Well, Coach Pearl knows that you can't be complacent with a 20-point lead. I mean, you're up 26, but we need to keep it going. And as you take a look at the Murthquake, not even able to participate. Scratch underneath the right eye. And this has been all Auburn. Dunbar for three. And Rickman rips it down. He's at least showed some productive minutes to the second half with Murphy out. Just on the offensive side and a traveling violation. So Brandon Murphy in the first half. That is Indiana State's starting center. It's like an elbow to the face. It was Chuma Okiki who was just calling for the basketball. Murphy had to leave, came back with a cut underneath his eye, and well, now they've patched him up. And looks to, as if he's going to stay on that bench the rest of the half. Auburn has done a tremendous job on Brenton Scott, the senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's at the line after the foul, midway through the second half. It's so difficult when you're down by 26 points to try to make the extra pass, get the ball inside, Kevin, get it back outside. So the tendency is to go to a one-on-one -on -one play in, and that's not how Brendan Scott had 24 against Indiana University. It's Greg Lansing, eighth-year head coach, and the inside scoop from Murphy. That's just a tough piece not to have out on the floor. And Lansing and the Sycamores, they went down by double digits early in the first half. And Auburn, they've been pulling away ever since. Well, you can see how depressed Murphy is on the end of the bench, of course. But, you know, he's from Montgomery, Alabama, which is in the shadows of Auburn University. His favorite college football team is Auburn. He wanted to play against this team with the most passion today. He came out, and a couple of minutes into it, he's sent to the locker room with a, a cut underneath the eye. It's unfortunate. Mitchell hanging in the air, and he's headed back to the line. The big question this year for Indiana State, what were they going to get from their bigs, from Devin Thomas, from Brandon Murphy, the Alabama native? Sycamores opened up with the victory against Indiana. That was a 21-point win over IU on Friday but a completely different pace at Assembly Hall than the, the pace that Bruce Pearl has put upon Indian State this afternoon. I mean, Auburn has attacked mostly with the straight line drive, and all of all five guys in the court are basically six foot seven or smaller, so they want to get to the rim. You know, that 
eliminates the two bigs. You know, Rickman cannot defend, you know, uh, Mustafa. He just can't. He can't defend a guard, and that's why they're getting to the paint, getting to the rim. And you pack it in, too. Auburn will shoot the three. Good cut, and a basket inside. Kedar Davis, that's a redshirt senior from Atlanta. And that's Sycamore basketball. Get it inside, cut, make the give-and-go pass. If that's not available, then do your one-on-one -on -one move in the paint. Well, it's nice to see Davis healthy this season, too. Indiana State ball. That pass from Murray is too far. All afternoon, we've been talking about the inside-out game. Excellent exhibition right here. Kedar with a nice cut and under control, Kevin. When you catch the ball, don't be so excited to go right up with it. You have the ball control. Get on balance and go up strong. Great execution. Davis, who's at Louisiana Tech the last two seasons, is looking to play somewhere else for his fifth year. Indiana State assistant coach Terry Parker. He's from Georgia, played at Louisiana Tech. And the connection adds a starter for Indiana State. So here is Rickman back at the line after the Mustafa Heron foul. This uh, tournament field has plenty of stories. We're going to see the next game with the Stiff brothers and their dad, his assistant coach, under Jeff Jones from Virginia. Bryant Stiff, the all-time leading scorer at Virginia. All of a sudden, the whole family is playing for ODU. That's an awesome story. That's Old Dominion and Temple coming up. And the Owls watching, waiting. Tip off approximately 2 p.m. today. The Temple, if Fran Dunphy's boys from up in Philadelphia. I used to love watching the guys in front of us that we would play the winner of because you're either doing one or two things, Kevin. You're like... I got that. I got that guy. I know what I'm going to do. Or, oh, man, I hope I don't have to cover him. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy at the line is probably one of the ladders. I hope I don't have to cover Mustafa tomorrow because he's nasty. He's going to go for 15 points a game today. He has not had to score for Bruce Pearl. Bruce loves the early game. Get up, 11.30 a.m. tip. They're ready to go. They score 72 points, and we still have nine minutes left. More importantly, he's convinced his team. He's convinced 20-year-old kids to love getting up at 7 a.m., and obviously they have today. They have definitely shown it all out this afternoon. Three ball in the air. Rattles around the rim. Ojanaka could not hit. Now there is Horace Spencer on the other end of the floor is just getting up. Took a spill. And yeah, that basketball is punted out of bounds. Indiana State basketball. So we just showed Temple showing uh, them on the, on the baseline watching this game. Bruce Pearl's already coaching for tomorrow. He knows that Temple, much like Indiana State, wants to play it in the 60s and the 70s. So look for Auburn to put the Temple button up again tomorrow. So what should you do? Let's practice. Let's practice against the Sycamores in the second half. Davis hits the three. That's just the fifth for Indiana State today. They hit 17 against Indiana on Friday. And almost every possession at Assembly Hall looked like that last possession. Nice pass, nice extra pass, and then catch and shoot. That's not the way you can make up a 24-point deficit, though. Harper still loose. Spencer finds Brown, sets the feet. And that is a shot clock violation. Boy, Auburn, they've, per they've turned it up a notch against Indiana State. Up big in the second half. Three Auburn scorers in double figures. A 73-49 lead over Indiana State. This is the quarterfinals of the Gildan Charleston Classic. Feast week is upon us, presented by Lowe's. Today, Auburn has the 24-point lead, playing for a second straight game without Austin Wiley, potentially a future NBA player, and D'Angelo Purifoy. Remember, on September 26th, the FBI comes down the probe into college basketball. Ten individuals were arrested, including four assistant basketball coaches. One being Chuck Person, who was an excellent NBA player 
a number of years ago. He later on November 7th, indicted on federal bribery and fraud charges, was fired. Auburn is down an associate head basketball coach. They're without Austin Wiley and Dangel Purifoy, holding them out for now, just in case there is any involvement. They don't want to risk their ineligibility down the road. But today, even without them, Mark, Bruce Pearl's team has run the floor just like they did a season ago. Well, it's opportunity. When your top two guys are not in play, not on the roster, Bruce says, hey, guys, who wants to play? Who wants to earn those minutes? And today, you've seen seven, eight guys wearing the orange uniforms wanting to play, and they have demonstrated excellent effort in team basketball. Look, it is not to be understated the type of player Austin Wiley is and can be. That is a tremendous loss not having him on the floor. Oh, he's a stud. I mean, folks, when you see this guy, when he comes back and you see him play the body that he has, he's a without doubt lottery pick in the NBA. And yet here they are controlling the Indiana State Sycamores. Now they're going to get into the semifinal. And you know, there's a couple of teams in this tournament that will not just lay down against this pressure that Auburn's put on this afternoon. Here's Scott. Boy, as great a night he had on Friday. And it's not been effective scoring the ball. Heron all the way. Look at the way they run the floor, Mark. Well, that puts Heron into double digits. And when we came into Charleston, Kevin, you and I were expecting him to score 20 or 30 because he is that third best player with the two guys, Wiley and Purifoy, not playing. But no, it's been a complete team effort for Coach Pearl. But look for Mustafa to be there when they really need him this tournament. Thomas couldn't finish around the rim. Now four players, as you pointed out, in double figures. Nine scorers today. Everybody who's played, who's touched the basketball, has scored for Bruce Pearl. I mean, is there a team that can run with Auburn in this tournament field? Oh, Temple can, without question. We're going to have the ability to watch the next game with... They got two great guards, Quinton Rose and Shiz Alston. I mean, they can run up and down with anybody, let alone just Auburn. And they could see each other tomorrow if Auburn wins... They're headed, of course, to the semifinals, and that tip-off at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Collision at the rim. This is Colin Hughes. He, he puts his shoulder down and tries to get to the line. You know, I like what the young freshman has shown us. When he has gotten into the game, he's taking it right to the rim. He is fearless. Clayton Hughes from Jackson, Tennessee. Now, he spent a year at Hargrave Military Academy after he finished up at the university school. A.W. Hamilton is head coach. A productive season before joining the Sycamores at Terre Haute. Now Spencer off the floor. Five out there for Auburn. Murray. And Mitchell. Harper. Runs the point, McLemore and Heron. Good job by Arbin. There was a little bit of full court pressure that recognized it, and then when it backed off, they walked it up. Oh, oh. And McLemore almost stuck it down. That's Harper again looking at the rim. Pull up, no, for Davis. Here they go again. That's going to stay here with 5.32 remaining in the second half. Tonight, 6 o'clock, Center With Michael and Jamel, it's the sixth. They're looking at Kyrie against Steph Curry matchup. Warriors and the Celtics. Plus Thursday night football preview. Big Ben of the Steelers take on Marcus Mariota and the Titans. Sports Center, 6 Eastern, also on the ESPN app. Deshaun Murray whistled for his third foul. Nice job by the freshman Clayton Hughes stepping up outside the restricted area and offering up the body for the charge. You know, and we're talking about Auburn's tempo. Tenth fastest in the country a season ago in terms of possessions per game. It's one thing to run, but you've also got an executed offense while you're running the floor. There's something to be said about the success for a really young core doing this with Bruce Pearl. Circle this guy with the ball right here. Number one, 
Jared Harper, you mentioned it earlier, Kevin, always has his head up, always in control. I mean, maturity beyond his years for a sophomore, and that's why the efficiency of the up-and-down possessions have been so effective this afternoon. So that backdoor cut is going to give Greg Lansing some nightmares the next couple days. But it's not as much as the backdoor cut. I mean, look, you're, you're baiting them into that cut. You're playing good denial defense on the entry pass. The rotation is what has been subpar this afternoon for Greg Lansing. You need to anticipate that backdoor cut, and then the big guy, Kevin, has to slide over, and the second rotation will catch the pass. None of that has happened for Indiana State, but it's early. He's going to learn how to cover that. Well, and keep in mind, Indiana State, sure, they have Brenton Scott back, but the next top three scores from a year ago have moved on. That's Everett Clemens, Matt Van Soik, T.J. Bell. Harper with the up and under couldn't finish. Oh, it's Hill off to the races. Yeah, a little miscommunication that time, and we're going back the other way. Here's Okeke. And yeah, he got a little shove from behind by Rickman, and I think Jeb Hartness just whistled Rickman for an intentional foul, which would be free throws of the ball. Well, you have to. It was a great call by the ref. You can see a little push in the back. You cannot push him in the back right there. As slight as that was, Kevin, that's a great call because you have to protect, you know, the open fast court uh, play because uncontested, you know, fouls from behind, you know, that, that ends up an in injury and bad stuff. And Lansing letting him know that right now. You make a play on the ball, and that's a different discussion. And Rickman, you could see it in the replay. He realized... While he was throwing that arm out there, I no, got to pull it back. He's got five foot long arms, so it's, you know, once you show it, it's going to be hard to pull it back. And it was an easy call for the referee because of it. Making Jay Billis proud somewhere, the wingspan. <laughs> Four fouls on Rickman, but salute to the junior from Collinsville, Illinois. He has played significant minutes with Brandon Murphy out with that eye injury. That's a, a key loss for Indiana State in the second half. The center only well, played a few minutes today. Heron lost it on the way up. McLemore is all around the basketball today. You like McLemore. How about his 4.0 GPA in high school? How about this? Thought about going to MIT? Uh, I was told by the coaching staff that he scored better than 1,600 on his SATs. There's some bonus question, apparently, that you can take, and he scored 1,600-plus on his SATs. <laughs> And just relentless pursuit all afternoon by McLemore. And how about the vertical? Straight up, straight down. I could have used some of those bonus points, by the way. <laughs> so there's a technical foul. It's on Auburn. No, you, you didn't need them. Come on. You went to Syracuse. I you know, was, no, no bonus points necessary to get in there. Come on, Kevin. Give me a chance there. That was your moment. I was waiting for you to take advantage. The Harvard of, of the Central New York. <laughs> in the words of our colleague Sean McDonough. So Heron sits down. This is Barnes at the free throw line. And Barnes sits the free. You can kind of see the body language there. He understands the situation. Heron is kind of a quiet leader. He's going to score. Ball is going to be in his hands every possession this year. How about last season? 25 straight games he scored in double figures. But he doesn't need the basketball every possession. Yes, yeah. that's going to be Jared Harper running the point. I mean, 32 of the 33 first year games and double figures. I mean, that is just a scoring power. Just remember that 2016 class that Bruce Pearl brought in. Heron, the first five star recruit to sign with Auburn. Last season, the Tigers, their first winning season in eight years. They're trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2003. Up big in the quarters. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. Hey. 2K Classic from New York, Virginia Tech, Providence. Those two teams of the NCAA tournament a year ago. Washington without Markel Fultz, but with new head coach Mike Hopkins. Oh, sure. From Syracuse University. Well done, Kevin. Actually, Mike, outstanding coach. Talk about energy. I mean, I, I have no question that Michael's going to be successful 
at Washington. He brings not only 20 plus years of recruiting, mostly on the West Coast, as you know, because that's where he's from, but just the mentality of successful program that will absolutely transfer to Washington. And those are two really good games. Buzz Williams has got a great team back at Virginia Tech. Providence, Kyron Cartwright, he is the point guard that you're not talking about that could be one of the best in the country this year. Well, they lost against a very good Minnesota team. I mean, Richard Pitino has got himself a NCAA caliber team and some really stud front court members of that team this year. Now, this week is great. The premier non-conference matchups. We've got tournaments all across the country. This is feast week. Oh, Dunbar! Might have whistled him for a technical hanging on the rim. Should be our fourth technical today. Well... It doesn't erase the great play, though, Mark. No, and maybe a second more than he needed to hang on. But how about the athleticism? You know, let go right there. It's a good call. It's by the letter of the law for an extra one second. But, you know, a couple of taunting technicals this afternoon. Right. And now an extra hang on the rim technical. You know, the guys from Foot Locker, they want to make sure, you know, people know they're here, too. I think Bryce Bray was hanging on the rim. Bryce Brown was kind of taking the photo, if you will after the excellent feed. So nine on the floor today for Auburn. It's been a nine-man rotation, in other words. Four in double figures. Every Tiger has scored. They're up over 80, had more than 100 in the opener against Norfolk State. And they are well on their way to advancing to the semifinals, and they would play either Temple or Old Dominion. That's coming up right after this one here in Charleston. I'll check that. We've got the 10th player on the floor for Auburn. And McCoy gets some minutes. Well, what I think was resonated most in that alley-oop dunk and the hang on the rim was just having fun. You mentioned it, Kevin, a little play, taking the photo of the, po of the portrait of the poster. That's what Bruce Pearl was telling his kids yesterday in practice. Let's try to get everything out of our minds about the off-court activities, and let's come back to going hard, putting pressure on the ball, running the ball up the court, and most importantly, having fun. Brown. Triggers, no. As Will McCoy picks up the rebound. And it's a matter of time. You talk about it, having fun. There's a little bit of an unknown factor in what Auburn has to wait for over the next days, weeks. We don't know, and Auburn does not know. Three ball from the corner. And that time it's Ojinaka. And Bruce Pearl's been asked about it. Information he knows on his assistant, his former assistant coach, Chuck Person, the eligibility of his two players, Austin Wiley, Daniel Purifoy. That's the factor you have to keep in mind. Auburn, they are waiting on just some sort of an indication from the NCAA in terms of when they will know. They don't even know when there no will be idea. any sort of decision. He has no idea. He, he, you know, yesterday during practice, there was an assistant coach basically with a cell phone attached to his ear. Right. Expecting in some hopeful fashion that maybe Wiley and Purifoy get their eligibility back tomorrow on Friday. We'll get them on a plane and get them to Charleston. Yeah, that they are is, not here. That's the level of unknown that Auburn and the coaches are dealing with. About to start 2-0. And about to head to the semifinals of the Gildan Charleston Classic. Now, remember, it'll be Old Dominion or Temple who Auburn would face. Tip this weekend. It's an NBA doubleheader on ESPN. How about Russ Carmelo, PG-13, leading Oklahoma State into San Antonio to take on the Spurs and then New Orleans and Denver. At 10.30, coverage begins with NBA Countdown, charged by Mountain Dew tomorrow at 7 Eastern. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. So, Oklahoma City sitting at 7-7. Seven and seven. The Knicks without Carmelo. 8-6 and six right now, just pointing that out. Well done. Duly noted. <laughs> you know, I think what gets lost is Bruce Pearl has 507, now 508, sure looks like, career wins. This man can coach. I mean, he's a master promoter and motivator. Everyone knows that. But he can coach. Let's look at the game plan. He came in. He got his kids to believe in it, to buy in, and they have dominated this first game. 
Boy, that was a massive rejection that time from Rickman, but there was a foul beforehand. Bruce Pearl, he started at Southern Indiana, won a Division II national title back in the 90s, then transitioned to the D1 level. So that old Dominion Temple game, we've got that coming up I'm at excited. 2 o'clock. That's going to be on the Watch ESPN, streaming on the Watch ESPN app or available on ESPN3. And coming up on ESPNU, we'll transition to the Puerto Rico tip-off at Myrtle Beach. That's at the HTC Center. Boise State and UTEP. You saw Boise State in this tournament a year ago. And UTEP. Both Leon Rice and Tim Floyd played last year at the Charleston Classic. Excellent experiences for both. And both teams, Kevin, were led by freshmen last year. So now one year matured, they've got some sensational sophomores that you're going to see on display in that next game down at the Puerto Rico Call Me down at the Myrtle Beach Classic. That's right. You just saw a moment ago, Cole Blackstock is into the game for Auburn, plus Devontae Williams, also Patrick Keim, who is the one senior on this roster. And with Auburn up a sizable 21 points, led by as many as 25 at one point in this game. Indiana State just got caught behind the eight ball early. Auburn ran on them quickly, jumped out to a nine-point lead in the first few minutes, and never quite developed the rhythm after that. A turnaround hook. Good possession inside. Daniel, uh, Daniel Huterman. Nice touch around the rim. Indiana State just never matched the intensity that Auburn came out with this afternoon. Auburn had a mission. They wanted to play hard defense and run out on offense, and Indiana State came out flat, and that was the ball game. Now, Indiana State fought hard, but Auburn running and gunning today. And 10 players scored today for Auburn. Four in double figures, led by Bryce Brown. He had 15. But Auburn now 2-0, advancing to the semifinals of the Gildan Charleston Classic. will play Temple or Old Dominion, which is coming up right here from TD Arena. Mark. It's a big win for Auburn and Bruce Pearl because now we can get back in the locker room and say, see, this is how we play basketball and build on the momentum this weekend, Kevin, in this great Charleston tournament. 83-64, the final. So coming up next from TD Arena, Temple and Old Dominion. Two teams that are almost sure to take a step forward this season. They bring back a lot. That game is going to be on Watch ESPN. So, we will talk to you from TD Arena after this.